So in the first half of the chapter, we dealt mostly with, we, we dealt all with experimental and theoretical probability. And we looked at probability as a ratio, which is a comparison of two things. So if we ask ourselves, what are the two things we need to know? The second half of the chapter is going to help us to develop some of the ways that we can calculate these two things. Well, remember, the ratio here, if we just talk about theoretical, is number of ways, you need to write this down, it could happen to number of possibilities. So those are the two things we have to know in order to calculate the probability. So what we're going to talk about today is a way to count those number of possible outcomes. For instance, let's, let's consider the question, how many different boy-girl combinations are there? Uh, if you have a dance coming up, how many different combinations could there be for a girl to go with the, with the boy-girl combination? Um, well, to do that, we should think of it in terms of how many boys and how many girls are there. Let's say we have a class of uh, 14 boys and uh, 12 girls. Well, think of it this way. I could go through and say uh, Joey with Sally, Joey with Sarah, Joey with, and then list all those off, which would take a very, very long time to write out all the possible outcomes. Or I can realize that for each of these boys, they have 12 options to choose from. And each, if you think about it, one boy has 12 options. Okay, if you want to look at it the other way, each girl has 14 options. Either way. So if one girl has 14 options, then if you are two girls, we're up to 28, right? Because 2 times 14 is 28, okay? Um, so really, what we can look at here is rather than writing out all the options, we can use the fundamental counting principle. You see in your notes, here's what it is. Uh, I want you to kind of just highlight this part right here. If there are a certain number of ways, so this all comes down to the number of choices, okay? So you, in, in this example, in this definition, there's two items. There's the first item and the second item. M, that's a variable that represents the number of choices, and N is the other variable. So we're looking at two different, two different numbers here, okay, for the first choice and the second choice. Well, if I just take those and multiply them together, I get the total number of options. So going back to our example, to figure out the total number, I have two choices here, right? I have the boys and I have the girls. So I have to choose a boy, I have to choose a girl. So there's my number of choices for each. If I multiply those together, I get my total number. So 14 times 12 is 168. 168 combos of boys and girls, okay? Let's look at this in another example. Okay, license plates. Let's say for these license plates, you the, I need you to highlight this, you have a single letter followed by three digits. Now, that's not the way the license plate works, but for our example, we want to keep it simple. So for letter A, find the total number of license plates. First thing you got to do is you got to think about how many choices you have to make. Okay, so I have to choose my first thing. That's going to be a letter. So I'll put a dash underneath. I'm just going to put a little reminder of what goes here. Okay, and then I've got three digits. So a number a number, and a number. I'm just going to fill in the blanks here. These aren't fraction bars. These are just blanks. And remember, I'm going to take all my choices, and I'm going to multiply them together. So think to yourself, for my first blank, I have to put a letter here. Okay? So if this is our license plate, we have A, 1, 2, 3. Letter, digit, digit, digit. A, 1, 1, 1. A, see how, see how awful this could be if we had to write all these out? It would take forever. So think to yourself instead, how many options do I have for just the first blank? Well, if you know your alphabet, some of you are sitting there at your desk singing to yourself, uh, we know there are 26 letters. Now think how many digits are there? Well, think, remember, these are single digits, so it's just this spot right here. Well, if you think, I could go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 10 digits. Now, it doesn't say anything about it, so some of you are thinking a little bit ahead here. Well, what if I couldn't repeat any of those? Well, it doesn't say anything about that. So I could have A, 1, 1, 1. I could have A, uh, I could repeat those. 
I could repeat those numbers. So that means I still have 10 options for the second, 10 options for the third. So all I'm doing now is taking 26 times 10 times 10 times 10. If you dump that in a calculator, you can do that. I already know what it is because it's just a 26, the three zeros, mental math. 26,000 possible license plates. And now do you see why that would be awful to write out? All right? Now, next one is find the probability that we have a Q in our license plates. Well, let's go back a page. Go back to the top of your notes. Up here it says, what do we need to calculate probability? We want the number of ways it could happen. So we need to figure out how many license plates are there that have a Q in them over the total number of possibilities. I've done this, haven't I? I've done the total number of possibilities. So my denominator here is 26,000. My numerator is going to be, I'm going to have to go over here and do some work. I'm going to have to go over here and have to draw my four dashes here. Okay? So I've got to have my, my license plate has four numbers or four, four characters. The first one has to be a Q. And the next three are all numbers. Well, here, the Q, I only have one option, right? But I still have 10, 10, 10. So 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. I don't have to show the work again for this, but uh, the 1,000 I do have to show the work for. Then, this is all theoretical, so let's simplify this. This is 1 26th. Okay? Letter C, find the probability that it does not contain a 3. So probability, no 3. Well, it's still out of 26,000. That doesn't change. But now, when I come over here and do this, well, I'm back to having 26, um, come on, having 26 letters to choose from. But now with my digits, I want you to think of yourself, how many digits do I have now? Well, now it's 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Notice I skipped 3. Can't have 3. So now I only have nine digits to choose from, okay? Because I'm getting rid of one of those options. So this one I am going to have to use a calculator. 26 times 9 times 9 times 9, 18,954. And I leave it to you to simplify that because it's Friday afternoon at 3.50, and uh, i got to be honest, I don't feel like simplifying. So... Uh, but you get the idea. The main point here is how did we get the numerator? How do we get the denominator? And realize, guys, this is stuff we've already done. Okay? This is theoretical probability. We're just applying it to a very complex situation. This is the fundamental counting principle. Okay. The other way you can do this, and I want you to highlight one word here, is to use a tree diagram. You've done these before. Um, when you need to do this is you need to describe. Uh, highlight that word, box that word. Look for that word, because notice, this isn't telling you, these are not telling you what the license plates actually are. So if we need to describe that, well, we're gonna have to be a little bit more specific. We can kind of do a shortcut here, but we do need to, um, we do need to be specific as to what our options are. There are two choices to make, the mats and the frames. If you think about a tree here, okay, here's the first split in the tree, that's going to be our first choice. We can go this way, this way, or this way. And then each of these splits off like this. So there's our second level of choices. Okay? So think of it that way. So my first choice here is going to be the type of mat. Well, if I go back in here, I can choose from a blue, purple, red, or green mat. The mat, if you look at a picture frame, and you know how like you have the picture in here? The mat is this spot all around. It's not the frame itself, but it's like a... Uh, whatever to, to just kind of be a border around it. So um, we have four options for that, right? Blue, purple, red, and green. Notice, pretty simple there. I can go up from one like a like a real tree and you know go branches like this, but I'm just starting with my four options. All right, then metal frame I, or my frame. I have two choices. Change colors here. I can either go metal or wood. Now, if I have blue, I can go metal or wood. If I have purple, I can go metal or wood. If I have red, I can go metal or wood. If I have green, I can go metal or wood. Okay? 
So notice uh, this, gives, this tells me I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options, which I could have figured out by doing the fundamental counting principle, right? Four frames, I'm sorry, four mats times two frames, four times two is eight. But this tells me all the different combinations that I could have by abbreviating it. Blue with uh, metal, blue with wood. Purple metal, purple wood. Red metal, red wood. Green metal, green wood. I also did not have to start with the mat. I could have started with the frame. I go metal or wood, and then I have four color options branching off of that. Blue, purple, red, green. Over here, blue, purple, red, green. Okay? So, that's that. The homework tonight, uh, the quick check is going to focus on uh, the fundamental counting principle. We will be doing some tree diagrams tomorrow in class. Uh, please refer back to your notes when you do that quick check if you're having a hard time. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Good luck.